Good day, everyone. Um, so today I've got this really weird thing to show you that I've been using quite successfully for um, oh, about a year and a half, almost two years now. And it's a way of modifying the query, the underlying query for um, an advanced find view or just a, a query within the system to use the in operator. And uh, we'll get into that, what that is in just a minute. But we're going to be using um, a couple tools outside of, uh, of Dynamics. And we, we start in Dynamics, we work outside Dynamics, and we return to Dynamics text to do the work. So let's get into it. So my name is Mitch Milam. I am a former 11-time MVP, if you don't know me. Um, you can reach me in any of the uh, ways here. Subscribe to the YouTube channel here if you uh, feel it's worth your time. And I, um, I've got a lot of old, older content out there, but I've also got some newer stuff that I'm just trying to get out as I have time. Uh, just some things that I've discovered along the way in the past couple years uh, as I run into them. So I've got a couple courses up on Thinkific. Um, I've got a JavaScript course that takes you pretty deep into uh, learning JavaScript for Dynamics, as well as a model-driven app design course that is uh, pretty much customizations on steroids. It started out as a simple, hey, here's how I think you should design model-driven apps, and it turned into this is everything I know about customizing and design within the model-driven apps of the Power Platform. So check those out when you get time. So in today's exercise, we're going to be using the XRN Toolbox and the FETS XML Builder plugin in that toolbox to modify a predefined personal query that we created. So if you don't have these, um, I've got videos on uh, using the XRM Toolbox, which uh, plugins I think are the, are the most valuable. This FETS XML Builder is right at the top of the list. So get those and um, if you don't have them, install those, and then uh, the rest of us, this will make sense to you in just a second. So let's jump over to Dynamics. And so this is just a simple query on a custom table that I have. And if you look at it, um, it's real simple. I'm just looking for county equals Grimes. And in this case, I'm going to be looking for a specific um, uh property name. In fact, I'm actually going to take this one out because I don't need that was part of my build. So the idea here, let me save this real quick. The idea here is what we're, what we're doing is we are creating a query that has all of the specifications that we want as far as column layout and organization like that already ready to go. And then we're going to get this uh, query and open it up in, in um, in the XRM toolbox and fetch XML builder and uh, actually modify it. So what we need to do here is, uh, like I said, uh, create a, create a uh, query, uh, just save it as a, uh, as a new view here. We already saved this, so it's not gonna come up. So create whatever you want. And the, the important thing to, to do is make sure your columns are all laid out because once we modify this query, we can no longer edit it inside of Dynamics because the in operator we'll be using is no longer supported or is not supported at all within the user interface. Okay, so that's, that's the, the big issue there. So here's our query, we've got it saved and now I'm gonna go over to Fetch XML Builder and I'm gonna click on the open button and I'm gonna open a view going to load all my views here okay now it's got my views loaded let's go and select my entity which is a custom entity so be down toward the bottom of the list so TLD property and then I am looking at test properties fetch XML so here is the fetch XML so this is the uh, the dynamics query language that they um, they we've had for forever and so this is uh, just kind of you preview what uh, what what you, you see okay so I'm click on OK and what it's going to do is it's going to parse that fetch XML and it's going to uh, give it to you over here in this tree structure that you can modify so what we're going to do is um, basically change this from a equal operator into a um, in operator now probably I should have said this earlier but let me let me take a step back why do we need to know this okay what what is going on that we need to be able to do this in this way 
Well, Dynamics is really good at querying data for things that um, you may or may not know. So, okay, I want to find this kind of data. So I, I'm looking for um, this state, this uh, county. Maybe I can do a range of stuff like dates and things like that. But what if I already know what I'm after? So let's let's say I I downloaded this list of counties earlier, list of properties earlier, and now I want to go work on those properties in a list. Well, it's really hard to do. The marketing list capability that's built in Dynamics is really easy to use, but that's not open for, for custom entities like I'm working on here. So we have to come up with a different way of doing it, and that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to jump back over, and I'm going to change my operator from equal to in. Okay, so what's happening here is it's it changed it from, from uh, equal to n, and an n takes a list of values. So there's a couple of different ways that we can get these values in here, and sometimes uh, I've had uh, I've had interesting uh, interactions with the FedExML builder where I have to kind of do it uh, a little bit harder than I thought. But in most times, you can just separate them uh, with a comma here in the string value. Okay. So let me go uh, prepare another file for you real quick and then we'll get into it and we'll show, show you a couple different ways. Hang on one second. Okay, so what I did is I went and pulled out the names of some of these uh, these properties I want to do and I just have them in a, a Notepad++ and I just separated them uh, as instructed into a comma separated list. So I'm gonna paste that in there, hit the tab key and you notice that it um, put another list of values over here. So the first thing I'm going to do over in the Fetch XML here is I'm actually going to remove the first one because that was our sample that just got us going. Okay. Now, if I want to see how this works, I just uh, click the execute button and let me go change my results back into a view so you don't have to look at the XML and I'll execute again. And here is, a, is pretty much the same exact view that we started with in Dynamics, except now it is um, basically just showing me properties that are where the name is in this list of other names. Okay. Now, this is all great, good, and wonderful, but what do I do with it now? Having it inside um, uh, XOR Toolbox doesn't do me any good. Well, funny you should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this view. And save the layout so you can change the layout to a point here I've run into some issues that I don't uh, don't fully understand so I'm a blame operator error on that but let's just say everything is ready to go so yes include the layout so now it has saved it back in the dynamics so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a hard refresh of the page so that it reloads the um, uh, the query for this specific personal view there and now we have a list of our uh, data that we specifically asked for. So we got 17 records there. We got 17 records here. And that's how you do it. Now, what happens if I want to edit this? Well, let's find out. So let's click on Edit Filters. Okay. In previous versions of Dynamics, it would pretty much explode on you or get very upset and not let you do anything uh, or just uh, act badly. But in this case, it knows what the in operator is, um, but it doesn't let you make a modification to it because this interface does not support it. So again, the back end interface of Fetch XML supports it. In fact, there's all kinds of fascinating things that we could use in the back end. Uh, using FexXML that we cannot use the front end for. And the in operator is a perfect example of that. So while it is a valid query, it is not a valid user interface item because they haven't created a facility for you to do uh, comma separated values and have that switch back and forth, kind of like the uh, FetchXML builder did. Okay, so you can still see it, and but all you can do is just delete it. You can't uh, you can't do anything else to it. So uh, again, with previous versions, you couldn't edit this at all, but in this case, we can. So this is how you do that. And again, the idea here is we know a list of things we want to work with. So like in my case, what the work uh, workflow would be is 
I am working on a list of properties. I have that list in front of me. I need to go and do specific things to this, this list. Maybe I need to run a workflow against all of these items without having to type them in one at a time. So I create a custom temporary qu a query and I put them up there and then I just go and I can select them like this and then go over to flow and run one or however many flows that I have like a update lot field. Okay, so I do go and do that. Okay, what, whatever it may be. So it could be simple as that, or maybe I'm, I want to do a group edit on some of these. Now these are all d disabled because I don't work here anymore. Um, but anyway, so this is the idea. So um, using a combination of a query you defined and a uh, modification of the underlying query operator, you can actually create a list of things you want to query against and it will give those to you. I do not know what the limit is to how many you can put in there. I couldn't find that. I used to know it, but uh, I don't know. So basically, just if you're having, I, I don't think this will do thousands. It probably won't do hundreds, um, but I've done maybe um, a couple hundred, maybe. Uh, I think it has to do with the size of the query, but I'm not 100% sure. So, you know, it will give you an error if you put too many uh, too many conditions or values in the uh in the condition uh, attribute here. So anyway, so that's pretty much it. Uh, this is, like I said, I've been using this process. What I personally did, uh, it, it once, I do this by hand all the time, but I also have an automation that I made where I have a very specific query and then I programmatically replace this condition uh, with a new list of, of things. Um, and then I run stuff against that. So that's a further thing. Maybe if anybody's interested, I can go through that one day. But all I do is I literally just pull the query, I cut it apart, uh, I replace the value section, and then I save it back out again. And then the next time that that, that uh, personal view is opened, the new values are in there. So anyway, like I said, I've been using this for a couple of years. It's extremely valuable to me and hopefully it'll be valuable to you. So if you got any questions or comments, uh, let me know in the comments. Have a great day.